guests and our brothers and sisters in the Lord and from many places, from Miami and the south on up to um, Illinois and the north and uh, out in Arkansas and Texas, Bay and Little George, uh, in uh, the west. And then uh, in Illinois, Brother uh, Bon Reynolds and Brother Marion Stantz, who I knew his uncle uh, so many years, Brother T.M. Jolly, and worked with him, pastor of churches under him, pastor of Des Moines, Iowa, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, and Anna, Illinois, under his direction. And um, it honors me to have Brother Marion Stantz with us. And uh, and I appreciate these men of God and all of our elders. My goodness, what a strong platform of elders we have. Uh, I so appreciate them. Then some out here, not all of our elders are on the platform, but some are out here in the congregation. And I honor them, appreciate them. And uh, then our sisters, our handmaidens of the Lord, Music, wasn't that music beautiful today? Look at our band, how it's growing. I'm so delighted with it. I'm so thankful for it. And these young people coming on and getting their instruments and getting in training and refurbishing and rebuilding our band to glorify God, to glorify His name. And then the singing, tomorrow always, putting every bit of effort she has her ministry, 50 years here with mine in the church, and music, song, praise, and then the talented musicians, and our uh, pianist, Mr. Stewart, and, and the um, one that, uh, Brother Sharp, the keyboard there, the organ, all of these, Brother Timothy, stepping in to lead, and with Sister Stewart, the band, and to strengthen it and to see you all in place today, just to, ready to work for the Lord, working for the Lord, then to look out and see this house so well filled uh, with people of God from every nation uh, in the uh, hemisphere here. I believe we have 17 different uh, nations of background and activity. We're all one nation in Christ. There is no race in Christ. I do not um, uh, see but one culture in Christ. And um, to see these 17 different uh, backgrounds mingled into one here. And then, of course, our winter saints that come and strengthen us, uh, Sister Sue and Brother Gene, Secretary of the Campground at Shepherdsville, it's always such a blessing. Wyatt, Sister uh, Sue and Brother Gene Wyatt, they have their home here in the winter and their strength to us. And then, of course, Brother and Sister Kirby uh, that have come. Then Brother Irwin, Brother Ed Irwin, that's from the Mill Shoals Assembly, uh, that's here now for three months out of the year. And uh, a biology teacher by profession. And to see him uh, mingling here with us and coming in the winter. All of these things are a blessing to this church, and we gain from this church. A few weeks ago, Brother, uh, just uh, the Lord just kept blessing and bringing people in from one place and then another, and lo and behold, here come Brother Adolf Rosella's home uh, with his family. And what a blessing they've been. What a blessing they are. And we're just blessed of the Lord. Then to have this ministry of Brother Reynolds Wednesday night and Brother McCann, they haven't said anything. But they're not eager beaver preachers. I, I relax when they're here. I don't I don't let the Lord take care of them getting up and ministering. They want it that way. They're not they're not wanting to be on the agenda unless God moves them out and we want to hear from them and always enjoy their ministry as well. But I want to uh, make a few remarks. So I hope that all of you got uh, the bulletin. I want to really appreciate the work done on this. This is such a, an addition to the church. If we read this, if you don't have one, the ushers have plenty, I believe. And it tells about all the events of the church. It has a little pastor's notes in it. 
something to encourage you with, and then it talks about what we're doing through the week, and uh, all of you being a family can enjoy that and be a part of that. Then to see Brother Kyle Dow with us driving a rental car, God leading him to drive from Georgia down here six hours, be here last night, today, has to go back after the afternoon service. Wish he didn't, we'd like to keep him forever with us. Uh, but um, we so appreciate Brother Kyle. And because of that message Amen. from the Lord. So you were 22 now, Kyle, 22 years old. And what a message he gave this church Amen. last night, right at the close of the service. So we, we appreciate these things. They're from God. They're from God. This is a day that we need from God. The church needs from God. Amen. Not away from God, but things from God. Individually, collectively, we need experiences, revelations, uh, intimate fellowship with God. We need a closeness with one another. We need family relationship in the church. The last 50 years of this precious family of God, there have been certain men. The book of Jude said, I earnestly urge you, exhort you, that you contend, you earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. He said, because there are certain men, he said there are certain men that have crept in unawares, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness, our lustful ways of operation. And he said, they have rented the church they have divided the church yes. and they have he said th these are spots these men are spots in your feast of charity yes. when they feast with you yes. feeding themselves without fear yeah uh they're they're spots god deliver me from being a spot in the feast of charity Amen. don't let me be remembered as a spot in the feast of charity uh, this is a feast of charity. You are in a feast of charity. Your church is a feast of charity. Everything that God lets you do is charity, divine love, divine nature from God. Everything that the church operates with, since we don't operate with organized religion and we don't operate by a systematic program of theology, <coughs> And then the only resource we have is the operation of the Spirit and the work of the Spirit and to be led by the Spirit because we don't have the props that organizational structure had. We do not have the furniture of organized religion in our house. And if we do, we need to uh, put it away. Uh, but we, we depend upon... Jesus' statement in John 4 when he said, Believe me, the hour is coming in which all will worship. You'll neither worship God, speaking to the woman, wasn't he? I believe. Uh, anyway, or perhaps Nicodemus there. Oh, Nicodemus is in the third chapter, I believe. But, but he said, uh, you, you, he said, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you neither in this mountain your bold God worship that you brought into Samaria, your God of the calf God that you borrowed from Egypt, he said, you'll neither worship in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. That isn't going to happen. Next verse, Sister Mary Ellen. You worship you know not what. Speaking to the woman, the Samarian. And we know what we worship. He said, for salvation is of the Jews. <clears throat> Salvation. John 1 said he came into his own. Yes. That was the Jew. Next verse, Sister Mary Ellen. But the hour cometh, and now is. In other words, it's arrived. It's coming, now is. When the true, so there must be some false worship. Yes, sir. If there's true worship, there must be false worship. Right. Yes, sir. Well, uh, just like he said, I am the true vine. Well, then there must be a false vine. 
Yes, yes. Uh, in, in John 13, yes. there must be a, a verse 1. Amen. I am the true vine. There must be a false vine. So he said, but the hour, the, the true worshipers, they will worship the Father only one way. Only one way. Right. And, and that, that's why we cannot settle for going back to things that we know were not true worship. We must embrace every fragment, every shred, every line, every sentence of the revelation given to apostolic, authoritative gifts of God in the body of Christ all the way from Christ till now. Yes. Everything that was authoritative, that is proven by Scripture, that is right by the Word of God, we must embrace that. We must cultivate that. Yes. We must spend our time contending for that. Yes. Because that is the faith. Now sometimes in the Scriptures, faith means confidence, like faith for healing, that's confidence. But in Jude, that's not confidence. No, that is doctrine. That is the apostles' doctrine. Contend for the faith that was once delivered. It was once delivered to the saints. Now, if I worship God in spirit and in truth, do you think you're going to go to college and understand college unless you progressively go through one, two, three, four, five, twelve grades? No, you'll not just jump from kindergarten to college. Do you, do you believe, saints, that you will ever be able to worship God in spirit and in truth just by closing your eyes and saying, I'm in the spirit? I'm in the spirit? I'm in the spirit? No, sir. No, you'll never do that. If you study to show yourself approved, you will learn to worship God in spirit and in truth. But no foolish man or no wayfaring man, according to Isaiah 35 and 8, is going to walk on the highway that's called holiness. The highway that's higher. That's the right. elevated way. Yes. See, no wayfaring man, right. maybe a fool, shall err therein. Right. There is a way and a highway. Yes. Right, brother. And it shall be called the way of holiness. Right. So you're not going to get in that by being a foolish person immature, impatient, fretting, uh, giving up, not cultivating. You can't have good manners unless you cultivate it. Right. You'll be rude the rest Amen. of your life Amen. if you don't cultivate having good manners. That's right. You can't be thankful unless you cultivate it. Uh, you just don't turn from a child to a thankful man or woman, a courteous no, man or a woman, without being studious. Right. Study. Yes. Uh, you, you just can't jump from ignorance to knowledge. Just close your eyes and say, I'm a fool today, but I'll be a wise man tomorrow. No, you will not. No, there are steps you take. You're right, brother. There are steps. The fear of the Lord. Right. Proverbs 1 is the beginning of knowledge. That's the beginning of knowledge. And um, see there, Proverbs 15 and 4 said, the way of life is above. That means you've got to Listen, if I, if I get to that light there, I've got to do something. I've got to get a ladder. I'm not tall enough to reach it. There's some labor involved. There's some study involved. I just can't jump some. I've got that light up there. No. See, how do God's people think they're going to go from imperfection to perfection unless they take the steps, they take the grades, they studiously apply themselves, they train themselves, they spend hours in apprenticeship. That's why if you're not faithful in the house of God, you'll never go from kindergarten to college in God. You, it's impossible for you to have long gaps where you fail to hear the word of God. Or you get timely messages. Or the Holy Spirit speaks to you. It's impossible for you. Uh, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Is that the scripture? Yes, is that the farmer's all night? Yes, that's the scripture, isn't it? It's the Bible. That, that's the word of God, isn't it? Uh, why, why, why come together? Why is it necessary? Why is it necessary for me? To, it involves labor, gasoline, time, patience, prayer, healthy body. For me to get well from sick. For me to assemble myself, but forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, 
Hebrews 10, uh, 36 is in that. 25, but forsake, but forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, and so much the more as you see. Now, I'm going to stay up here as long as I feel this covering. Is that all right? Is that all right as long as I feel this covering? I'll say it, I'll tell you one thing. When it leaves me, I'll sit down. Uh, but, but forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, and, and as a matter of some heads, some, some will do that. But exhorting one another, encourage, don't just assemble, but when you assemble, exhort somebody. Encourage somebody. Yes. Just don't come together. Come but when you together, exhort someone. Yes. Encourage someone. Be a worker yes. in the vineyard. Exhorting your, uh, one, another, one another. And so, and so, and so much the more. Yes. Don't let up. Increase. As you see the day. The day. What is the day? The day of the coming of Christ. That is the day that we are now preparing ourselves for, is the coming of Christ. That is the day. We live in the day of the Lord, but we're preparing ourselves for the day. You see, we're living in the day of the Lord, but we're preparing ourselves for the day. Because the day is the coming of the Lord. And we're preparing ourselves for that. Uh, as you see, the day approaching. So. I'm not going to jump from ignorance to knowledge. I'm not going to jump from a fretting, impatient, rude, discourteous attitude, unthankful, unholy. I'm not going to jump from that to a thankful, courteous, nice, mannerly, orderly, Christian, just by saying, well, I'll close my eyes, blink them three times, turn around, and I'll suddenly become a holy man. I'll suddenly become a holy woman. I'll suddenly change my manner. I'll suddenly become rude, uh, uh, courteous, and I'm rude. I'll, I'll, I'll suddenly be attentive, and I'm not. No, you will not. Any any studious man or woman will gain knowledge. Any fool will ignore study and prayer Amen. and devotion to God. Uh, see, now that's a little straight, but that's the way it is. Uh, so, see, because uh, you cannot see the face of God without prayer. You cannot daily pray. You cannot see the face of God without holiness. But without holiness, no man or no woman shall see the Lord. No man or no woman. I, pretty, I put a pretty straight letter out on the grounds this week. And um, it, it was straight from the heart of the pastor to the people that live here, the 55 people that live on the grounds. But, but, it was so encouraging to me when... Um, one of the saints that doesn't live on the ground drove up and said, Brother Marlowe, I want to tell you, I'm not on the grounds, but I read the letter and said, uh, I can tell you now, I changed a lot of my habits this day because I am under conviction that a man of God has spoken. Well, did you know that's the first step towards salvation? Sure, yes. It's when you get under conviction, yes. when a man of God speaks, when a man of God talks, when a man of God puts out, that's the first step toward, because you're not going to close your eyes and ignore all the commandments of God, the Word of God, and suddenly change uh, into a, a perfect man or a perfect woman, because uh, the Word of God is there. Now, let me, let me, I, I, I want to go from here, if you got, got your Bible, I want to get into Hezekiah 37, I mean Isaiah, pardon me, Isaiah 37, the 37th chapter of Isaiah for a moment. The setting is this, and you can go to the Word and Mary, Ellen, Sister Mary, I have it on the screen, that Hezekiah uh, was in trouble with God, and Israel was in trouble with God, and they needed they needed help, and uh, Hezekiah knew that Israel was in line of judgment. He knew they needed help from God. There always has to be a leader. I've watched people try to do away with leadership my entire 65 years in the, in the salvation experience. I've watched them try to do away with leadership. We don't need a leader. We don't need a leader. We don't need leaders. There is foolish, there is foolish, 
They're as foolish as they can be. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 Psalms 14 said, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. Uh, you can be a foolish man or a foolish woman to say that you don't need leadership. Uh, you need leadership. I need leadership. There are men that are superior to me in the ministry. They've always been. I've always had men that excel more than I did in the ministry. I cultivated experience with them. I gained knowledge from them. I submitted myself to them. I've always known there are gifts lesser and gifts greater in the plan of God. And you need leadership. Uh, if you fail to have leadership, you'll do what you wish to do. You'll go where you wish to go. You'll be what you want to be because there is a nature in us that is wild. We're called the wild olive tree in the scripture. Did you know that? Yeah. Did you know that the Gentile was called the wild olive branch? <laughs> wild. wild. And I say they are wild. Right, you? you turn them loose and they're wilder than wild. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, you turn a Gentile loose and he's a hellion on wheels. Uh, you know, when, when you turn him loose and just let him go. Uh, but uh, look, the scripture said, we being a wild olive branch, were grafted contrary into nature. See, we were contrary to nature. And, 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 and God has to help us because we, we, would, we need leadership. Uh, so uh, Hezekiah knew that Israel must have leadership. He knew they must have it. And so he began to pray. And Sister Marilyn, would you pick up the first uh, three verses of, of Isaiah? Thir and it came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it, that he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of God. He didn't uh, assume kingly ar arrogancy. Uh, he, he wasn't proud. He humbled himself. And uh, he sent a, a, a king and uh, Shebna, uh, the scribes and the elders, uh, the priest, and, and Isaiah, uh, the prophet, he consulted him, Hezekiah did. And it was a time, now going down to the verse where it says, but it was a time of trouble and rebuke and of blasphemy, for the children are come to birth and there is not strength to bring forth. That's an important scripture. That's an important scripture. It was a day of trouble. Now parallel that day with this day. Parallel that time with this time. A time of trouble and rebuke and blasphemy. Do we have all of that right now? Do you see that all around you right now among the family of God? Trouble? Is there trouble in the land? Is there trouble in the world? Is there trouble in homes? Is there trouble in economy? Is there trouble in America? Is there trouble in religion? Is, is there's trouble. Yes. Trouble all over the world. Uh, and, and a blasphemy and rebuke. And I, uh, Hezekiah said, for the children are come to birth. That is, all that God wanted to bring to birth in Israel, what could not come to birth because there was trouble and rebuke and blasphemy. And you cannot have birth when there is trouble and rebuke and blasphemy. No assembly, I've watched assemblies, I've pastored assemblies now for nearly 60 years, no assembly will bring forth fruit in that assembly. No assembly will have revival. No assembly will grow when there's trouble and there's rebuke and there's blasphemy in that assembly. You, and no body, no body, no, the body of Christ will not bring forth when there's trouble and there's rebuke and there's blasphemy because a mother cannot have that. Can you imagine a mother in a birth room and there's trouble, somebody is fighting, somebody is uh, cutting one another, somebody is yelling at one another, uh, somebody is, uh, uh, is striking. Can you imagine a mother trying to bring forth birth like that, why she couldn't do it. She couldn't do it. And the church cannot, the church never has, never will bring forth a birth, even though it's time. I believe right now 
in the church, it is time for God to multiply his people, not by the hundreds, but by the thousands. I believe it's time. You say, Brother Marlowe, why, why, why don't we see thousands? Because there's trouble, and there's rebuke, and there's blasphemy. Let's work on that. Let's bring peace in the birth room, and there'll be children brought forth. Yeah, not, not one. Not one. There'll be 10, 12. I had said in Holy Ghost services, I was telling Brother Stamps last night, I was in a meeting across the street here, the old sawdust floor tabernacle across the street years ago, and his uncle was preaching. Brother Jolly was preaching. And uh, uh, Brother Gerald was in that meeting. Sister Euphemia was in that meeting. And there was a man that wanted to reprove of the gospel and he was making trouble and he got out of his chair out there this man did and uh, he came up and thought he knew the bible and the word and he was just raising all kind of problems brother jolly had an anointing and a mantle come down upon him from god and that great mantle hovered right over him and he began to preach like a fiery oracle i mean it was fire in that tabernacle it was glory in there you could feel the presence and the power of God, the authority of God. And this man got right up here, and his wife came up on the other side, and she's going to help him. Uh, she's going to help him, Ananias and Sapphira. And they came up on the other side, and she reached her hand out to slap Brother Jolly. And he reached out to grab Brother Jolly, and uh, physically, and all of a sudden, they fell down on the floor like two dead people. Hallelujah. They just fell down. They couldn't move a finger. Uh, they couldn't move a finger. I didn't read this out of the book. I've seen this. I know what the power of God will do. I know what the authority of God will do. And, and Brother Jolly kept on preaching and preaching. And all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost began to fall. And two women, never been there before, lifted their hands, began to speak in other languages. And the Holy Ghost come down. Another one over here started. Another one over here. And I looked around on the platform. Those preachers were swaying like cordwood on that platform. Uh, some of you knew Brother Don Patton. He was lying there like cordwood on that floor. Uh, some of those ministers were slain under the power of God. The power of God and 16 people received the Holy Ghost while that glory was falling. Eight people were brought to God and their lives changed and there was hundreds of people that were blessed in that meeting yes. because the glory of God came in to bring strength to bring forth. Strength is where the Spirit of God is. Strength is where the, you don't have to pump the Spirit of God up. If the Spirit of God is not assisting you by the time you have sung a song five or six times, seven or eight times, you might as well quit pumping at the well That's because God is just not going to let water come out for whatever reason that he does or he doesn't. You don't have to prime the Spirit of God. You, there is a way of worship. There is an order. There's a holiness that you will not demand God to come to you. He will take his Spirit and set it upon you and you won't get out from under it until you accomplish his will. Praise the name of, of the Lord. And when he decides to lift it, he will. But when he wants it there, it will be there because it is the glory of the Lord. It is the glory of the Lord. There is another way that is higher. There's another step, children. There is another place. Don't stop here. Don't camp here. Don't stop here. I don't care what has been. I've been recounting some history. But history is history. It's gone. Those miracles I talked about are over. Don't stop here. There is a day of refreshing. This is the time that God wants to bring again his glory in the church of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, don't, don't level off here. Don't be satisfied with what we have. God is blessing our local church. And I believe he's blessing the body of Christ. I don't think we're just being blessed here. I believe Brother Bond is being blessed in Jonesboro. I believe you're blessed in your ministry. I believe other pastors are being blessed. But don't stop here. 
in this local church because God is blessing us. There's a reason God is blessing us. Some people are praying in this work. Some people are living above sin. Some people are uh, seeking higher heights and deeper uh, uh, depths in the Lord. See, see the danger, the danger is that if, if, if Hezekiah in the 37th chapter of Isaiah would have said, all right, all right, uh, we can't do anything here. There's trouble, there's rebuke, and there's blasphemy. But he didn't do that. No. Hezekiah began to pray. Yes, sir. And he had the scribes search out. Yeah. And the first thing you know, God heard Hezekiah. And God came and delivered Israel and delivered Hezekiah. Because it was time for him to do that. Um, and and, and th this, is a, this, this day, let me punch it together here. This is a day now, while it's a day of trouble and rebuke and blasphemy, socially, politically, uh, in the nation, in the church, in the world, it is not a day to hang our hearts on the willow tree. It's not a day for us to have a mourning spirit. It's not a day for the church to say, I can do nothing because I am nobody and God has not helped me. Reverse that. You can do all things through Christ. You can live godly. Whether they live godly or not, you can live godly in Christ Jesus. I said, whether they do or not, you can live godly in Christ Jesus. You, you can be a Christian. You can be a, a child of God in the anointed Word of God sitting under the covering of an anointed ministry. And if you're not, find one. If you're not, you don't feel you are, then find one. See, uh, somebody said, I don't feel like I'm sitting under the proper covering. Well, then find the proper covering. If you, if you, can't, if you don't feel like you're under the proper covering, then find the proper covering because it is possible for you to go to another level in the day of rebuke and trouble and blasphemy. Praise the name of the Lord. My goodness, I feel his presence in that. Uh, it's, it's possible, see, because God does not want you to fail where you are. God does not want you to stop your progress from immaturity to maturity, from imperfection to perfection. See, I, I look at the word perfection a little different than I used to look at it. I used to look at the word perfection as believing that the day would come when you would judge me and I would judge you as being free from any earthly fault or failure. Friend, that will never be while we're living on this earth. Somebody is going to look at you and find fault. But that is not important. The important thing is for them to look at you, and if there is no fault, and there is no fault, the fault is removed between you and God. Then if they judge you wrong, they only will judge you wrong. But the time will never come when everybody will look at everybody and see there are no imperfections in the body of Christ, or that everybody is up to a level of everybody. But in the body of Christ, there is a remnant, there is a wheel in a wheel. There is a wheel in a wheel. There, is pe there are people of God that are in, uh, Eve was the rib in Adam's body. And God did not take all of Adam's body, he just reached in and got the rib. Uh, the, the rib was what he wanted. And he's coming back for the bride of Christ. Somebody may look at you and say, you're not perfect. What matters not? Matters not. It does matter, but it matters not. It, it, you want to, them to say that they can see an example in you. That matters. But I'm saying that if they judge you wrong, then they would just judge you wrong and stand before God. But your relationship that you want holy and clean and right 
is between you and God. Amen. And you, you want that right. You, you don't want anything messing that up. Yeah. You, you want uh, your, your, your life to be clean before God. You want every step you take to be clean before God. Yeah. You want to be right with you and God. So the relationship is important between you and God. That's what Hezekiah wanted. He wanted uh, it right between, and he humbled himself, and he prayed, and he repented. Uh, there's a lot to be done. Let me, let me bunch this together here, uh, if I can, real quickly. There, there's much to be done. I think we'll study. I think everybody's mind ought to dwell a few minutes on, uh, you know, I always hated just rhetoric. I hated it, that's the word I use. I don't like rhetoric, just somebody talking. Um, I, I just don't. I, I like for something profitable to come from what they're saying. I don't, I, I don't just words, words don't, you know, I want something profitable when those words are finished. I, I, if the fellow's going to start building a house, please have a house there when you're through. Uh, show me that you build a house, you know. Uh, don't, don't just do something and then leave it unfinished. If you tell me that you're going to heaven, then go to heaven. If you tell me that you want to be a Christian, be a Christian. Right. See, uh, don't, don't just rhetoric, just words, uh, because they're unprofitable to the, to the hearers and to the doers. So I never did just like that. But, but I always wanted to see something come from the effort that we're making. We're making a lot of effort right now. Uh, it, it costs thousands of dollars to keep church property right now. Multiplied thousands to maintain a place of worship. Yes. Uh, multiplied thousands. It takes time. How much time are you spending on this weekend trying to get a kernel in your bread basket? How many, how much, how many hours are you giving uh, sitting there, coming, getting dressed, burning gasoline, uh, depriving yourself of outside activities? A lot. A lot. Uh, there's a lot of energy. There's a lot of effort going into maintaining what we call the church. Well, what we term the church. There's a lot of effort in between cleaning it, painting it, keeping it, power running, doors opening and closing, ushers in place, people in the dining room cooking food right now, preparing, uh, platform people sitting here. Some of you uh, fighting a little sleep that it comes every now and then. Uh, you know, it's a, there's a lot of energy going out. There's a flow of energy to keep the church right now, to keep the church, to keep it in existence. And then there has to be a lot of teaching, and there must be a lot of praying, and there's got to be a lot of singing, and there's got to be a lot of giving. Uh, and our young people are looking at us. Look at all those eyes on me right now. Look at all, I'm self-conscious, my goodness. You all are looking at me. Uh, look at all those eyes on me right now. Uh, and there, there, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of effort going into what we term the church right now. If, it's, if it would be futile, if we would uh, need to come to birth, and there's not strength, and it's time that we come to birth, it's time that the church be born right now. Now, there's three births in the scripture. I'm not talking about conversion, born again, John 3. I'm not talking about the second phase of birth in the scripture, born of the water and of the spirit, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, John 3. Let's go over to John 5, and I'm talking about, I'm talking about being born of God. Somebody, Mary Ellen, would you get that scripture? He that is born of God, 1 John 3 and 9, he that is born of God. Are you, are you still able to follow me a little bit here now? Uh, are you still with me? Have I talked too long? Am I? Are you still with me? He that is born. See, I'm interested in born again. I thank God for that. I've been born again. I've been born of the water and of the spirit. I've been born of the Holy Ghost. But I am seeking a greater birth. Because a greater birth is John 3 and 9. Yes. John 3 and 9 is greater yes. than St. John 3. Yes. It is greater because here is another term in the scripture that we have to reckon with. 
This is not receiving the Holy Ghost. This is not water baptism. Right. Amen. 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 There's a greater birth because the birth is finished. Glory. Say, Brother Marlowe, three births, no one birth, three stages. Yes. Born again is one stage. Born of the water and of the Spirit is another stage. Just like there's a court, there's a holy place, and there's a holy of holies. Just like the tabernacle in the wilderness was not all the court. There was a holy place. Not all the holy place. There was a holy of holies. All of that was a tabernacle in the wilderness. Well, uh, if you've been converted, that's wonderful. Thank you, Lord, for conversion. I'm glad all of you are converted. I hope all of you are. I hope all of you are saved from your past sin. But look, that, that isn't enough. Now, now, now I'm, I'm going to put back into where I'm, I'm... If you are letting everything there is on earth right now called the weeds and the tares growing up around your soul and your heart, and the, they're called the cares of this life. And if you're letting the cares of this life choke out the seed that was planted, you may not have had a stony ground. Matthew 13, you may not have had that, but you've got, you've got a condition just as bad as stony ground. Your heart may not be stony, but you may have cares of this life Amen. that are growing up. Yes. And you can't effectively serve the Lord. Okay. You can't effectively minister. You can't effectively do what God wants you to do because the cares of this life are choking out the Word of God. The Word of God is planted, but the cares of this life are choking it out just like the stony ground is. Yes. Just like uh, the wayside soil is. But the, the cares are choking it out. See, you have to, you, nobody else can. You cannot guide me to heaven. You can exhort me to heaven. You can teach me. You can love me. You can lead me. But you cannot take my decisions 24 hours a day and make them. I must, within myself, decide to serve the Lord. I must decide to give him my heart. I must decide to go by mama and daddy and sister and brother and friends and houses and land. I must go by religious stuff. I must get over hurt and pain. I've got to go past uh, the problem. I cannot let the problem keep me from the th third phase of the birth. Because I have been born again, I have been born of the water and of the Spirit, but now I can't close my eyes and say, presto, change, oh, three times around, and open my eyes, and I'm suddenly born of God. I can't do that. I'm going to have to study, and I'm going to have to pray, and I'm going to have to ask God to come in my life and take my mind and take my spirit and turn it from lust to holiness, right. turn it from ungodliness right. to righteousness, yeah. turn it from rudeness to manners, yeah. turn it from uh, frivolity in the world and going after everything there is and pleasures of this life. I must let God change me. I must let God take me and mold me for he, he is the potter and I am the clay. And I must let him put me back on the potter's wheel. But I'm marred, Brother Marlowe. I've been through an experience. I tell you, it just almost cost me my life. It cost me my spiritual life. Uh, there are thousands of Christians uh, that, that go through experiences, millions. But look, thank God for the grace of the potter. I said, thank God for the grace of, of the potter. Because the potter, Jeremiah, is that Jeremiah 18? But Jeremiah, Jeremiah, saw the potter take the marred vessel and put it back on the wheel again. Praise the name of the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Aren't you glad there's grace of the potter? Aren't you glad the potter has grace that though your vessel might be marred, there may be a crack in it, he can't accept it that way, but he's got grace, and he'll put you back on the wheel. And if you'll let him, he'll turn you again. And he'll turn you again. And he'll keep turning you until... You are finding the grace of God. So uh, there, there's much to be done right now. But like a college student starting to college, 
Okay, I've got one semester. I'll turn around three times, close my eyes, say I could have a presto uh, change and they're going to hand me a bigger ring. No, no, they're not. I beg your difference to differ with you. You, you. you know what you've got ahead of you? If you're studying for a six-year degree, you've got five years and most of the six to go yes, before you get that degree. He that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. Praise the name of the Lord. Contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. See, we have to do that. So, so uh, in this, in this, First John, First John three now nine. I want to go back there because, and I don't want to belabor a point of where to bore you, tell you, uh, tell your mind. See, because you can let the attitude, the look, the decision of somebody living in your house, living around you, working with them, of uh, somebody in the pew next to you, an attitude, a look, a habit. A decision that they make influence it can take you out of the straight and narrow it can it can lead you into fables and foolishness That's and folly That's true. amen means of such strength yes. is the gate yes. that leadeth to life eternal and few there be that find it John said whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin doth not. You mean uh, he, he is a, he, he cannot, he didn't say he cannot uh, sin in the beginning, he doth not. Then he cannot because he doth not. Praise the name of the Lord. If you continue to sin, you'll always sin. But if you just don't sin, you're not sinning. So you are free from that sin. You have turned from imperfection to perfection. But look, the scripture says, if you're born of God, doth not commit sin. That is, you don't practice sin. You're not given to sin. Sin is transgression of God's word, transgression of his law. Because, well, why, why don't you? Why don't you do that? Because you did it for years, why don't you do it now? Because the seed, the seed, what is the seed? The word of God. The seed remains. Well, it remains a seed. I see the bird didn't come and fly away with it. The tares didn't grow up and choke it That's out. The cares of this life. But the seed remains. It just stays there. The seed remaineth and you can't sin. Doesn't mean the potential to sin is not there. You will never, somebody said, one morning I'm going to wake up and I'll have no feeling to sin. Oh, friend, you better get that illusion out of your mind. You, you know, you're dead to sin. That's why you won't sin. But you have the potential to sin. Why do you have the potential to sin? Because this looks like Bill shown to me. This must be Bill shown to me. Uh, this couldn't be any other but Bill shown to me. So as long as I can see Bill shown in the flesh, or John Stewart in the flesh, John Stewart has the potential to sin. But he will not sin, and he cannot sin, because he reaches a place in birth of the Word of God in him. Praise the name of the Lord. He's not just born again. He's not just born of the water and of the Spirit, but he is born of God. And therefore, the potential to sin will be there as long as this body is there, as long as this structure because this stuff right here, this this flesh, you're not going to keep that uh, all, all of all eternity. You know, this, this won't be for eternity. This is only for a season. Yes. Amen. 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 But Paul said, we know, yes. but we know, 2 Corinthians 5, yes. but we know if this earthly house yes. of this tabernacle yes. meet us up. Yes. What have we got? Got We've got another. another. <laughs> Glory to God. I said we've got another. I'm, oh, I'm so happy about that, especially at 77. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm so happy. Now, if I was 20, I might not be as thrilled. But I'm, I'm, so, I'm right at the right age to be really happy. Pardon me if I have a personal revival up here. Praise the name of the Lord. about. 
out, but that one isn't made with hands. It's eternal in the heavens. Praise us. Hallelujah. Christians ought to get happy in their spirit when they know that being born again is not all there is in serving God. I'll, I'll be honest. Can I be very candid and honest? Hey, Can I be? Well, yes, Brother Moore. I'll be an honest preacher. I'll be an honest preacher. If I thought that I was going on to the church age another 60-some years and there wasn't something coming besides this church age, I might be a little weary. But I can't be weary in well-doing. Let us not be weary in well-doing. Now, I've got this. For in due season. What is that due season? It's when I'm born of God. When there is a potential, but there's not the will or the ability or the desire for me to sin. I am born of God because the seed remains in me. Praise the name of the Lord. And now I know that there is another house not made with hands, and that house is awaiting me. There's a lot to be done in the time that we live in right now. There's a lot to be done in the time we're uh, to be living. I, in fact, there's so much to be done, I can't even get started this afternoon. Uh, I, I need about two or three more hours just to get into this. Praise the name of, of the Lord. Let me tell you something. There is so much to be done because this is a day of rebuke and trouble and blasphemy. Yes. But there is strength going to come to the house of God. Yes. There is strength. 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 Blessed be the Lord. There is strength coming. Don't you sell the body of Christ short. Don't you say because there's trouble and there's blasphemy and then all of that that the body of Christ is over and done. There is, it would be unscriptural for me to stand here today and say I'm going to heaven by myself. That there is no body. That the body of Christ is not in the earth. No, friend, uh, that isn't true. The Lord has always had a body, a remnant, a church, uh, and it's made up universally of the chosen, those that have revelation, those that have vision, those that have the name of Jesus written in their forehead. That's Praise it. the name of the Lord. It's made up of people that have been anointed of God to have a vision. Hallelujah. Praise our God. Praise our God. It is not made up of slackers and lazy people. It's not made up of rude, discourteous, unmannerly. It's not made up of people that don't want to learn and grow. It's made up of hungry people yes. that are striving to get to the straight gate, to do his will, to please him, because he is going to welcome us with well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. Praise the name of the Lord. You've been faithful in a few. A few, that's all. When I get tired down here in the church, I think I'm doing too much. It's just a few things. My goodness, I've got a world to administrate. I've got a world to reign with Christ over. Praise the name of the Lord. If I can't reign well in the church, what will I do in the millennium? If I can't reign well with Christ in the church right now, what will I do in the millennium reign of Christ? I, can, I won't do because I will not be capable of being in that millennium. So there's a lot of things that, will, that, that, must, uh, that we must focus on. We must focus on uh, the, the, the fact that Christ is coming. Uh, uh, of Hebrews 9 and 26 said, uh, fellow said there's no second coming of Christ in the scripture, uh, but Hebrews 9 and 26 said, uh, let's get that, uh, that, but unto them that look for him, is that uh, uh, 28 